Welcome to Project Match. You are here because you have expressed personal interest in gaining abilities. Some of you already have them. Some of you did not know that you already had them. Some of you did. Nonetheless, your cooperation will be appreciated and rewarded. Please stay tuned for further announcements. And kind of around you, you can see, like, the other, you know, four. And as and as you're starting to look around, you can realize there's more than four of you here. There's probably, like, a good dozen or so kids in these cells. And you can see people just looking around and kind of talking at each other confusedly. Can they hear each other? Assumedly, they can hear who's in their own cell, but you definitely can't hear any of them. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I didn't know how many people were talking about it. Don't do that with the, that's bad. This is not good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. We're we're in a tricky situation for sure. No, I don't. Our name foster mom. mom is gonna be really mad. I don't remember her name right now. Uh, it's okay. It's a stressful situation. <laughs> We've only been there a couple months. So at this point, uh, Presley and Paisley, what do you do? I would like to. Try to use one of my bonds, but uh, I'm not quite sure how to how to activate that. Yeah, go for it. What is it? Uh, four eyes are better. When you and your other half assess a situation from two different vantage points, one makes a move and the other may clear a condition or ask a question. Okay. So you just have to figure out some way that each of you can get a unique vantage point on this uh, particular situation. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't even have to be physically. It just has to be a different point of view. Can I? suggest on this, or does she have to figure it out? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Well, what if one of us was looking around the room and the other one was looking out into the hallway? That sounds fine, yeah. So, I will, I think that you would be the one who would be looking out into, or I would be the one looking out into the hallway, which would make you the one looking around the room. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, so, when you're both doing this, does it say who's actually rolling this thing, or? I'm sure it's the person who has the bond. I don't have it written down. You know what? I, I actually I actually like that. I think because you're the one who has this idea, I think you're the one rolling it. Okay. So go ahead and give me that plus superior. Plus Roll plus superior. Okay. Uh, I will say um, which one of you wants to clear a condition. I don't have any conditions, so it would be... It would be me, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well... But we're probably not doing all Yeah, that. I got a four. Okay. <laughs> you got a four. Oh, I love that you're flubbing all these rolls. We are both assessing the situation, though, right? Like, technically, both of us are? Technically, yes. Can I use my criminal mind? I also have criminal mind. You know what? I'll give you that. Sure. Okay, so we can both ask a question? I'll, 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 I'll give you one of them. I'll give you one of them. Okay. I think the one that would make the most sense would yeah. be uh, best way in or pass, which yeah. would be best way out. Well, I guess into the hallway would be yeah. out. I, you know what? Uh, I want to. I want to know how I can best infuriate or provoke the uh, the the voice. The voice. Sure. You remember when Iona was like banging on the glass? That definitely got a response. So basically, trying to trying to mess with your cell is going to annoy them. Okay. And the other kids can't hear us. Oh, they can't hear us. All right. And in the cell are it's us, a water fountain, and two benches. Tell me to walk through the wall. Yep. Oh my god, yeah. You know what you can totally do? What? You can totally just walk through that wall right there. Like, you have the power to do such a thing. And that power has always been in you. And that power makes you, you. Wow. Hey, did, on the mess, do I still clear that condition? You know what? Yeah. I don't see why- Alright, so that's what made me not angry, because I believe oh, I can we walk also, through this wall. It also says, uh, we both get plus one when following the answers. Yes. Cool. Okay, well- I believe that I can walk through the wall. Uh, I think that... Okay. Yeah. So what you're doing here, uh, since I know, but the audience doesn't, would you go ahead and explain for them? Uh, my character's power is that they're super motivating, and they can motivate anyone to do anything. Uh, also the teleportation, but mainly the motivation. 
And for the folks playing along at home, uh, we have one delinquent and a joined, right? You have told your sister that she can walk through walls. Paisley, what do you do with this information? I'm going to walk through that wall. Okay, can you actually walk through walls? I can now. You believe you can. Does this power give them the ability to do it? Yes, her power does. It gives us the ability to do the thing. Okay, so I am going to have you uh, overcome an obstacle by, once again, unleashing your powers. So roll plus freak. Love it. (laughs) I'm rolling, right? Yeah. And to be fair, you are now following, because you're messing with the cell, you are following that, so this is plus one. Oh, plus another plus one, because plus three feet. Uh, Yeah, so if that was a nine, that would be a ten. Yeah, cool. You do the thing. Uh, You walk through the wall. Now, are you walking out into the hallway or just into the cell next to yours? I'm going to walk into the hallway. Okay. As you do, you can definitely feel that pretty strong electric, like, shock, but it doesn't stop you this time. It does hurt quite a bit, but Paisley, you are now out in the hallway, and the very instant you are, a red light comes on overhead and starts spinning, and, like, there's an alarm that happens. You probably don't have a whole lot of time before something happens here. So, what do you do? Can I try to get Press to teleport to me, or is it going to shock you again? It's probably going to shock. It probably is, but you can still try. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll try teleporting out of there. Okay, go for it. Unleash those powers. Eight plus three. It's an eight. It's an eight. So do you want this to be unstable temporary, or do you want to mark a condition? I will mark afraid. That sounds fair. Yeah, you definitely get that shock, but uh, you know it was coming this time, so you kind of brace yourself for it, and you are now out in the hallway, and um, as you do egg into that hallway, you can see like some of the other kids in these cells just start like, like silently cheering and like raising their hands behind that uh, the glass there. The people's champions. And as you do, a you can see down the hallway now. In one direction there is a door, and in the other direction there is a stairwell. You can see it goes both up and down. So what do you do? Do we hear anything besides the red lights? I mean, there's a siren, but nothing besides the siren yet. Do you want to split up? And if something goes wrong. Jump to the other person? Yeah, that, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I don't mind, uh, I don't mind going towards the, the door. Okay, so, well, we, he said there's a stairwell that's up and down, so one of us has to go up and the other one has there's to go There's a stairwell and a door, correct? On one end of the hallway there's a stairway and the other end there's a door? Yes. Alright, you go to the door, I'll go up the stairwell. Paisley's going to the stairway, Presley's going to the door. Paisley, when you get to that stairwell, yeah, it's a stairwell, it goes up and it goes down. Uh, and that red light, that siren is still definitely going off all over the place. And you can start, and you can hear at this point, very rapid footsteps uh, coming down the stairs. Well, then I'm going to go down the stairs. Okay, so you're just going to go down as well. So you start uh, just running down the stairs? Just running, booking it. <laughs> Top okay. speeds. Okay. You pass a couple of doors with um, letters and numbers stenciled on them. So you see like a B1, B2, uh, C1, C2... And then you get to the bottom of the stairway where there is a big set of double, like, like surgical doors. You are now four flights down from where you started, and we'll get to what you do in just a second. Presley, you get to that door at the end of the hallway, and there is one of those big round, like, porthole windows in it. uh, And there is, like like, a hand lever kind of, kind of a knob there. It is locked. Do you try and get past that somehow? Let's see, how can I get past that? I don't know. Can I, I, I can I just look through it? Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely do that. You look through this. There is a big empty room with a chair in the middle and what looks to be sort of like a I mean, you've seen surgical lights. It's a big surgical light. So it's basically a big wide light with a handle in the center for moving it around and that's positioned above said chair. Probably the worst thing about the chair is that there are both arm and leg straps. Don't like that. And then all along the wall there are cases. And I do want you, uh, since you don't have a whole lot of time here, to go ahead and assess your situation. Roll plus superior. That is a six. Okay. So you now uh, hear footsteps uh, also. They are coming down the hallway, and as you look sort of over your shoulder, you can see uh, a couple of these guys in the uh, very scary-looking, you know, kind of paramilitary gear from the warehouse coming swiftly down the hall towards you. Let's get back over to Paisley for a sec. You're at the bottom of the stairs. You can hear uh, footsteps quickly booking it down the stairs after you. You've got a big set of surgical doors in front of you. What do you do? Okay, people are still coming down the stairs. Uh, Are the doors unlocked? Yeah, these are just big swinging doors. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to push those doors open. Sure. You enter into 
not a really happy looking place. Let me give you the quick rundown and then I'll see what you want to do. There are big computer banks uh, on either side of this room. And they're like the big sci-fi things with like, you know, lights and blinking, you know, dials all over them. I know exactly what I'm going to (laughs) do. Give me just a sec. There's a big control console and behind that are sitting uh, a couple of people in white lab coats. And all of these, uh, all of these people, when you enter the room, kind of like start pushing buttons on the uh, control console. And behind them are probably five or six big person-sized tube tanks with what look to be people in them. Unconscious, just floating in liquid. So, Paisley, what do you do? Uh, I'm gonna use my... My sweet, sweet, melodious voice. And I'm going to shout at these little white coats, and I'm going to say, you're going to open up all those gates upstairs. Oh, I like that. You know, you know, normally this would be a provoke someone, but you're using your abilities to do this. You're using your superpowers to do this. (laughs) So I think in this case, you are unleashing your powers. All right. Well, well, actually, actually, sorry, question. Because this 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 is a question of intent. Are you intending to do them harm? I'm intending for them to do what I say. But are you intending for harm to come to them at some point? Mm, uh, wait, at some point, or like, because of this? Because because of this, no, I just want... Okay, that's fine, that's fine. That's what I'm looking for. Go ahead and unleash your powers. Okay, um, so I rolled a 9 plus what, 10? Nice! Uh, so they kind of stop halfway what they're doing, and then just as one, they sort of look down and start, like, you know, typing uh, commands in. Uh, let's get back upstairs to Presley. Hello. So as as these guys are coming down the hall at you, all of these uh, you know plexiglass doors just raise up from the floor. They look very concerned for a moment, and then they get bum rushed by kids from each side. Woo! <laughs> We're not uh, gonna. So- yeah, that's good. <laughs> so you have a moment here, Presley. What do you want to do? Uh, let's see. I think. I would like to stand up straight, put my put my hands on my hips, and I'm gonna get my my best gym teacher voice, and I'm gonna say, "You beat those dudes, children. You beat them. The power's been in you all this time." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna have you roll to defend someone. And what is that plus? That is plus savior because these kids are kids and they are basically attacking heavily armed guards. Uh, so you motivating them may well help them stay safe. That was a, that was a six. That was a six. Uh, well, unfortunately, on a six, I don't think they can really hear you over the sirens and the sounds of them like fighting each other. They're just they're not able to really get the full benefit out of this. Like, a couple of the kids closer to you definitely do. But with that, that means that the guards here kind of figure out what's going on, um, because only the ones close enough to hear you could make that happen. And they start uh, kind of redoubling their efforts to push through this crowd of kids and get to you. And I think one of them actually kind of... uh, I think one of them just straight up whips you across the face with a baton. So I think I'm going to have you take a powerful blow. And roll plus conditions marked. Yeah. That's a five. Nice. So do I mark on a potential? Miss, you do. So on a miss, you stand strong. Uh, tell us how you weather this blow. Okay, so he hits me on the face. I'm going to spit on him. Oh, you're just going to like take it and then just like spit at him? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and I think I think like seeing like this fourteen year old kid just like take a baton across the face and then spit in his face. I think that just rattles him. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's get back down to Paisley right quick. So yeah, these uh, these lab coats at this point have uh, definitely done what you said, and they are now kind of like backing away from the console and uh, looking at you a little bit fearfully. If we're being honest, what do you do? I think you guys need to go to sleep. <laughs> sure. I'm not going to make your roll for that at that point. I think you've already got it in you. Uh, they just move over to the corner and then like lay down in a pile of uh, of of scientists. <laughs> scientist cuddle time! <laughs> scientist, scientist cuddle pile. And yeah, within a few seconds they're just snoozling away, as scientists do. Dreaming of beakers. <laughs> so, at that point, Paisley, what you doing? Um, okay, so can you describe the room to me one more time? 
Sure. So on either wall, uh, as you walk in to your left and your right, there are big banks of computers, big, uh, you know, capital S science computers. Uh, in the middle, sort of situated to be able to view this door, is a big control console. And then behind that console are, let's say, five big person-sized tanks, and each one of them has a person in them. They're, like, full of liquid, and they're definitely just unconscious floating in this liquid. Are the people children? They they look to be youngish, yeah. Uh, are there any, like, dead giveaway, press me and release the children buttons? There are not. Do they look like they're on life support? Uh, no. They, you can see them if you take a minute to, to actually watch. You can see that they are all breathing. So whatever this liquid is, they are able to breathe it, um, but they are unconscious. They're, they're not moving at all or responding to anything. Alright, uh, I, I assume the scientists were on chairs. What kind of chairs were they on? Just swivel chairs. Okay, can I try to break one of the tubes? Yeah! So I'm going to have you pick me a number one through five. I want four. Okay. You are definitely trying to break something with your just normal brute force. And you're doing this, I'd assume, to get this this kid out of this tube. Yeah, the goal is to not maim the kid. Okay. I think the way I'm going to roll this is I would like you to defend someone. So, roll plus savior. Well, no, this is not an immediate threat. This is this is more of overcoming an obstacle. Okay, good. sorry, go ahead and unleash your powers. So, plus freak. Plus freak. <laughs> Except it's... N- oh, wait, okay. Whew, seven. <laughs> Okay, I think you know how this song and dance goes at this point. Yes. Do you want to mark a condition, or do you want me to uh, make this unstable or temporary? Unstable and temporary. Unstable or temporary. Cool! In this one, uh, there is a young uh, African-American kid. Now, it is worth noting that all of these kids are wearing basically, like, black kind of jumpsuit things that end at the shoulder and, like, halfway down the hip. And they're not hooked to anything, but all of them is missing at least part of one limb, and this kid looks to have part of his left arm from, like, the elbow down, just missing. As you hit this with the chair, it probably takes you three or four times uh, to get it to start cracking, and you can tell this is going to take a minute. Um, So in that minute, let's get back on up to Presley. So this this hallway battle is kind of rolling. Every so often, more people will kind of funnel in from the direction of the stairwell. They are now trying to quell a riot, and some, and every so often, the guys in the suits will, you know, get a couple of kids into a cell. It'll slam down almost immediately, like it, like the cell itself knows that they're supposed to be in it. You don't see them trigger anything; it just happens. At this point, this fight is definitely starting to turn in the direction of the guards. And how have you been doing? What have you been doing? What have I been doing since spitting in the guard's face? And uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as this as this fight progresses, what's Presley doing? Okay, so I think I'd be noticing, like you know, these these cells slamming, putting kids in the slammer, if I may. Come on, slam! Welcome to the jam. Presley would get worried, and uh, Presley would probably start to notice that they're losing. Uh, so I think they're probably gonna try to teleport to their sister. Okay, so you're just going to try and teleport uh, downstairs to your sister, so... Hmm, yeah, go ahead and unleash your powers. Okay, that's a five. So you but teleport... that fills up my potential. Nice. Uh, we'll get to that in just a sec. You do teleport, and you do teleport in the direction of your sister, but not all the way there. You don't know where you're at, but you know that you're down uh, from where you started, and you know that you're closer to Paisley from where you started. On the upside, there is not a running fight happening down here. On the downside, on the downside, there are a bunch of vats with, you see basically every kid you saw in the hallway in various stages of being grown in these vats. There are like two, there are like two or three Ionas in here. Oh, wow. That's my dream. That is your dream. Uh, okay. So. And there's at least, and there's at least two Todd Romans. Oh, that's my dream. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, so let's, let's take a little look around. Do you want to look around and assess your situation? Yeah, I want to assess my situation. Right, go for it. That's a seven. Okay, uh, so you get one. What here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? What here is most vulnerable to me? How could we best end this quickly? Or, of course, things off of criminal mind. Uh, how can we best end this quickly? Okay, and by this you mean what? Uh, I'm going to say being... Away from my sister. 
because that's that's probably what is the whole event for me. Sure. Um, so you know that uh, the Paisley is downstairs. You can, through this room, see a stairwell that you know goes downstairs. So you could literally just run downstairs. Yeah, let's, let's just book it. Top speed. Okay. So you do technically have a plus one uh, ongoing while acting on that answer, but I'm not going to make you ro- roll to run downstairs. Uh, so you are running downstairs. And as you start running downstairs, you can hear this, like, chunk, chunk, chunk kind of sound. And uh, as you kind of clear the bottom of the stairs, you see this big room with computer banks on each side uh, and a big console in the middle. And you see your sister just like repeatedly slamming a rolling chair into this big vat with a young kid in it who is missing like half of his arm. And I think it shatters as you as you get to the bottom of the stairs. And you have this moment uh, where by this point the sirens have been off and you don't know how long they've been off for. The red lights are still spinning, which is weird. But you have this moment where you can kind of see each other across this room, and it is just dead silent. And what does that panel look like? Well, I guess I'm not... Do you still have a condition marked? Um, yes. You have to clear conditions by doing, like, specific things. Well, yeah, I know, but yeah. what condition do you have? I have afraid, which is, uh, engaging threats. No. I'm gonna... I, I, I feel like Paisley is gonna, like, look a little embarrassed for just a second before looking determined and pissed off. Like, just like a little flash of embarrassment. And then she's like, no. I want to hug my sister. Okay. So there's that kind of like moment of, uh, of embarrassment. And then Presley just runs across the room and like grabs, uh, grabs Paisley. I hug her back. And this is the point at which this either gets better or worse. And I'm going to let you decide which. Because you hear a very familiar musical intro uh, over those P- uh, PA speakers. It's the first few bars of a song, the pretty familiar strains of a song that was released uh, at this point about 10 years ago in 2009 by an artist named Kesha. It is the opening chords of TikTok. This slaps. <laughs> and that's actually where we end that particular issue. <laughs> Masks A New Generation is written for Magpie Games by Brendan Conway. It is made of high school crushes, twins, and abandoned warehouses. Why have you not bought it already? PJ is played by Emily. Find her on Twitter at Buzzies B, that is B-U-Z-S-Y-B-E-E. Presley is played by Lenny. Find her on Twitter at 1-800-TOD. Apex City is GM'd by Jeremy, who also writes the music and edits this podcast. Our album art was provided by Ash Brandt. Find them on Twitter at cinder underscore Brandt, on Instagram at brandt.ash, and on Tumblr at Kimmins. Find us on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Follow us on Twitter at ApexCityCast. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next issue.